This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hello, feline friends. This is Michelle Byrne, your host on Catitude. You know, we're right near the holiday season of 2020, this crazy year, and there's so many things you need to know to keep your cat safe during the holidays. And I have with me an amazing guest. We're going to talk all about it. We'll be right back. Moose is the German Shepherd and hasn't had any kind of health problems at all. He has been on Dynavite since he's a puppy. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot oh. com. We tell anybody that has a dog, if there was something that you could do right from the beginning so that you don't have expensive veterinary bills, why would you not do it? Get the Dynavite. Dynavite for life. Get some Dynavite. How happy your dog will be. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back, everyone. I have with me today Dr. Justine Lee. She is an ER vet, a toxicologist, and the host of our very popular, amazing show, ER Vet. Welcome, Dr. Justine. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Oh, I'm so glad to have you. Dr. Justine, you know, people have a lot of things around their house, whether it's holiday time or not, that might pose a really critical danger, maybe toxic or just get your cat really sick that they might not be aware of. What are some of these things that you can think of? Yeah, so I will say as an emergency critical care veterinary specialist, the veterinary ER is so busy during the holidays, and especially with COVID and curbside and everyone being stressed out, the last thing you want to do is visit the ER vet with your dog or cat. Now, I will say when it comes to cats, the majority of plants out there generally just cause vomiting and diarrhea, but If you have a cat, you absolutely cannot bring Easter lilies into the household. And I know you're thinking, ah, that's an Easter lily. It's holiday time in December, but we still see poisoning. So people are bringing in bouquets. Maybe they have family visiting. They don't know how to cat pet proof. So you always want to avoid bringing in any true lily, like a lilium or hemorrhalis. These are true lilies. They have a huge bloom. It's usually four to five inches wide. They smell really good. But unfortunately, they're the number one plant that I see florists putting into flower bouquets. My husband bought me a bouquet. He called the florist and he said, hey, I can't have any lilies. We have cats in the house. It has to be cat friendly. And it still showed up with lilies. So they use even the greens as part of the bouquet. So you want to make sure never to bring any type of bouquet into the household unless you are positive there are absolutely no Easter lilies. The other important thing is people way overhype the dangers of poinsettias. Poinsettias are not a big deal. In fact, you are totally welcome to bring them into the household. The likelihood your cat or dog are going to chew on them are so rare. Now, if you've ever broken the leaf of a poinsettia, you'll notice there's that sticky, milky white sap. That's what's poisonous. And honestly, it's not a big deal. It's just going to cause a little bit of drooling, a little bit of oral irritation. The bigger dangers, again, are Easter lilies. What about other bouquets, other types of plants? Because a lot of people during the holidays will bring plants as a gift. Yeah, that's a great question, Michelle. You know, I would say the holiday-related ones like Christmas cactus or mistletoe, holly, most cats aren't even going to touch those. Like mistletoe and holly, they're really pokey, especially holly. They have a really thick, waxy leaf with sharp little ends. So most cats aren't going to touch that. Mistletoe hopefully will be hung out of reach. Um, Now, there are a couple of different types of mistletoe that are out there. Um, They generally just result in drooling, vomiting, and diarrhea. So again, not that big of a deal. Again, it's going to be those true lilies that are in those fresh cut bouquets that can actually cause acute kidney injury in cats. Not a big deal for dogs, but as little as two or three leaves, even the water in the vase or the pollen can result in poisoning in cats. So again, 
you always want to be careful bringing in those bouquets. Now, I will say the other things in bouquets are usually things like irises and Gerber daisies and carnations and roses. Those honestly are not going to be a big deal at all. Maybe they have Peruvian lilies. Now, that's got the word lily in it, but those aren't true lilies. Those have a tiny bloom. Those are only about an inch to an inch and a half in terms of the size of the bloom itself. That's not a true lily. That's not going to cause kidney failure. Again, that's just going to cause some vomiting and diarrhea. It's those big blooms or those beautiful lilies that we worry about the most. Okay. What are some things during the holidays that we might have out that we wouldn't have during the year that are just extreme no-nos? I know we talked before about potpourri, but that would be a good thing to mention for people that didn't hear that other interview that was really good. Sure. There's, you know... You know how it is during the holidays, people tend to bring things out that they might have stored otherwise, glass objects or just different decorations, and they might not think, wow, I have a cat. This should not be there. Yes. Well, I will say if you have a cat and you have a live tree, you have to make sure that thing is really well secured. So even if you have an artificial tree, cats are less curious about that because they don't have like the evergreen smell coming out of it. But the first thing you want to do is if you're bringing a Christmas tree into the household and it's a live one, you want to make sure that you secure it really well. So use like some type of wire or really thick fishing line to anchor the Christmas tree to the ceiling through a hook. You want to make sure it's really well secured so it doesn't tip over. Because you know what your cat's going to do? He's going to climb up the tree trunk, right? (laughs) Now, I will say a lot of people get really paranoid about when they add water into the holiday Christmas tree holder. And honestly, it's probably not a huge deal if your cat takes one or two licks. There are some fungicides, um, some plant fertilizers that are sometimes leaching out of the tree that may go into the water. So my easy tip is cats hate aluminum foil. You always want to fill that little bowl with water so your tree lives and so it's getting some water. But when in doubt, don't let your cat drink out of it or your dog. Just wrap it and surround it with some aluminum foil, and that will keep it safe. So again, not a big deal if your cat drinks the water. So make sure that tree is secured. The biggest danger I see is actually tinsel. Now, if you want to put a bunch of ornaments on the Christmas tree, that's not a big deal. Now, if you have really playful kittens, you obviously want to use common sense, like avoid the ones made out of glass that can fall, that can cut a pet's paw. Most people usually have the plastic ones or the metal ones, so not a big deal. But the danger, tinsel. If you have a cat in the household, absolutely no tinsel at all. Cats are so curious. So that tinsel that's hanging off that Christmas tree, it looks like a shiny, fun toy to them, right? They've never seen it before. So they're going to bat it around. They're going to swallow it. And unfortunately, tinsel is really, really dangerous. Same exact thing with ribbons on holiday presents. Please, if you have cats, no ribbons, no yarn, no string, no tinsel at all. And that's because it results in a linear foreign body. Unfortunately, that linear stringy material ends up getting wrapped around the base of the tongue. And it's really hard to see. But as it slides into the esophagus, into the stomach, into the intestines, and it's anchored at one point, it actually saws through your pet's intestines, and it can result in a severe life-threatening infection. Unfortunately, to treat a linear foreign body, you need to do x-rays, you need to put an IV catheter in, you need to start that pet on aggressive IV fluids and anti-vomiting medication, you may need to do an ultrasound, and then you need emergency surgery. So this typically can cost anywhere between $3,000 to $5,000. So You want to save your holiday bonus instead of spending it on an emergency surgery. The easier thing is just keep that tinsel out of reach to begin with. Dr. Justine, I have a question. Do you think this affects, I know we're we're talking, we're cats, we're all about cats, but some people that have cats have dogs. Does tinsel and ribbons, do those affect dogs as well? Or it's not a big deal? Dogs aren't that interested. Yeah, that's a great question, Michelle. I will say in my 20 plus years of being a vet, I have seen the occasional dog have a linear foreign body, but honestly, some of the younger listeners aren't going to know why. And it's because of cassette tapes, which they're like, what's a cassette tape? (laughs) Right? So cassette tapes, if a dog chews on an old cassette tape, that brown material is really, really thin and it's 
can cut into the stomach and the intestines really easily. So I've only ever seen it with long strands of carpet that are really stringy and cassette tape. Definitely more of a cat problem. So again, linear foreign bodies are more common in cats. Dogs are more likely to get foreign bodies, like they're going to eat big boxer underwear or a hand towel or a lot of rocks or, you know, two pounds of kitty litter. But they generally don't chew on tinsely or ribbon-like things. That said, it can still happen. It's more of a cat thing, but you still want to keep all that linear stringing material out of reach. Okay, I have another question. What about if people are using paper strands, maybe their little child made as a substitute? Is that going to be as much of a an issue with cats or cats not going to be as attracted to it as much? That is also a great question. So if you are, say, stuck in COVID quarantine and you're trying to think of arts and crafts for your kid and you want to time them with holiday decorations, I'm going to say, you, you know, when people will cut strips of construction paper and make them into loops and then decorate the tree, that is totally fine because that construction paper or paper is going to break down really easily when a dog chews into it. The danger, say you decide to do a big strand of popcorn or Cheerios as some type of fake tinsel or fake Christmas decoration, that can result in an issue because now your pet's like, oh, there's food on the tree that I can chew on and they're going to chew that string too. So I'm going to say when in doubt, you want to make sure that it's in an area where your dog and cat can't chew into it. When in doubt, it's probably safer to use construction paper loops to decorate the Christmas tree instead of actually using food. And maybe you can make a fence of aluminum foil. Say your cat does <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. I've never heard of that, though. I know it's going off on a side, but why don't cats like aluminum foil? It's probably because it's shiny. And you would think that they're attracted to shiny things like tinsel. But for some reason, I don't think they like the crinkling sensation when they walk on it. So make a carpet of aluminum foil around your tree. <laughs> well, some people will actually like if you have a cat that's scratching on their furniture, especially on the vertical surface of a sofa, um, some people will use like double sided tape or they'll just tape some aluminum foil because cats don't like that sensation. So thankfully, it can be used as a deterrent for cats. I personally just wrap the Christmas tree cloth all the way around so um, my cat can't get to it. And honestly, I've never had a problem having pets in the household with a Christmas tree. But again, I never use tinsel. I should mention, Michelle, that one uncommon poison that's related to the holidays that a lot of people don't think about is handmade holiday ornaments. Now, everyone's really into arts and crafts right now because we're all super bored during COVID. When people make handmade holiday ornaments, this is a very similar recipe to homemade Play-Doh. And the reason why it's poisonous, and this is more poisonous in dogs than cats, but it's basically made of food coloring, a ton of salt, and a little bit of flour. And so people will make this as an arts and craft project. When a dog chews into that, it can actually result in salt poisoning. And salt can actually cause really profuse vomiting, even bloody vomiting. And it can result in a life-threatening elevation in the sodium level. So if you're going to make a handmade holiday ornament, please make sure your dog doesn't chew into this. I'm talking to all you Labrador retriever owners out there because Labradors love to get into things. So when in doubt, there's definitely a lot of holiday dangers that we want to keep away. So again, things like tinsel, things like popcorn on a string, those homemade holiday ornaments, anything that's ribbony. Anything that has yarn, you want to keep out of reach. And I always tell people, use common sense. Your dog has such a good sense of smell. Of course, he's going to smell those delicious chocolate-covered espresso beans or those chocolate-covered macadamia nuts, and he's going to chew into them. And not only is the chocolate poisonous, but the macadamia nuts are poisonous too, or the coffee beans are poisonous. So when in doubt, no food presents under the tree. Wow. Okay, we're going to take a short break and come back and talk a little more about some topics toxins that are toxic for your cat during the holidays. Molly, here's your dinner. <laughs> Zeus, that's not your food. Don't let that happen to your precious cat. Elevate your cat's eating experience with the Cat Tree Tray. The Cat Tree Tray keeps your cat's food off the floor and conveniently located on the cat tree. It's the perfect way to eat. 
It's a beautiful wrought iron tray that easily attaches to your cat tree and keeps dogs and other critters out of your cat's dish. A must for multi-pet households. There's a 6-inch tray for large bowls and a 4-inch tray for smaller bowls. Purchase your cat tree tray today. Go right now to CatTreeTray.com. That's CatTreeTray.com. C-A-T-T-R-E-E-T-R-A-Y.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back, everyone. We're talking to Dr. Justine Lee. And if you have not checked out her show, you need to. It's your vet. And she is a toxicologist, she is an ER vet, and she has a wealth of information. We're going to talk a little more about some dangers during the holidays and about CBD. So, Dr. Justine, I have a question for you, and this has come up. I think it's rare, but what about gifts? Like, I've heard about cats getting into alcohol and dogs getting into alcohol. I would think that's rare, but... There's all kinds of things that happen. Is that likely or is that just very unusual? You know, there are some unusual poisons that I will see in dogs and cats during the holidays. And so you're right. Things like alcohol poisoning are one of them. Now, most dog and cat owners know not to give alcohol to their pets, but they forget about an unusual source of alcohol. And it's actually unbaked bread dough. So for all you people who have sourdough kits out there right now and you're baking and you're getting ready for the holidays, you want to pay attention. Because during the holidays, a lot of people are baking more. And anything that has yeast inside and isn't baked, if your dog grabs a piece of that unbaked bread dough, what ends up happening is even if your dog grabs a small amount, it's going to expand in the stomach. Now remember, the dog's stomach is going to be warm and moist with gastric fluid. So it's almost going to act as an artificial oven. When that happens, you're going to have the sugar being metabolized. You're going to end up having the yeast rise and produce carbon dioxide. That's going to result in gas accumulation within the stomach, which can actually result in a life-threatening gastric dilatation volvulus, what we call a GDV. Now, in a previous episode of ER Vet, I talked about the dangers of GDV and what you need to know about, especially for all you standard poodle owners German Shepherd owners, Golden Retriever owners, Labrador Retriever owners, Great Danes, Irish Wolfhounds, and any big breed that has a really, really deep chest. We know that with GDV, it's because too much gas is in the stomach and it makes the stomach turn. Well, same exact thing can happen with alcohol poisoning and with gas accumulation from ingesting that unbaked bread dough. So not only is there going to be too much gas production, but now that yeast and sugar is going to be broken down into alcohol. Unfortunately, that's going to result in ethanol poisoning in your dog. And when we see that, all of a sudden, your dog may start walking drunk or collapse or vomit. And unfortunately, not only does this cause neurologic signs or central nervous system signs in your dog, but it can actually drop the blood sugar too. And that's our biggest danger. So that can be life-threatening. Now, it's not a super common one. And you're right in that it's relatively rare to see unbaked bread dough ingestion and alcohol poisoning. But when I see it at the ER vet, it's usually during the holidays. So again, for all you bakers out there during the holidays, all of you guys with Uh, sour dough kits. You want to be really, really careful and keep that out of reach. Now, cats, they rarely will touch this stuff. Cats are so dignified. They're not big gorgers. They're not going to, you know, chew on huge amounts of food, but it's probably poisonous if they ate it too. So when in doubt, keep that stuff out of reach. We talked about in the past potpourri, which is something that is so common during the holidays. And also I want to know about candles because those are normally very common during holidays too. I mean, most cat owners know not to keep the candle within reach of the cat in case you have a really curious cat. But what about those two holiday items? Yeah, I'm going to say with any type of open flame, you always want to be really careful because it could just take a accidental tail wag 
or a cat, you know, leaping over something where that candle can actually cause a fire. So when in doubt, no open flames, just be on the safe side. I have so many pet owners who say, oh, I just put it on the mantle. You know, the Easter lily bouquet's out of reach. He can't get into the candle. Cats can get into anywhere. So when in doubt, you want to be safe. Now, when it comes to liquid potpourri, I'm not talking about your typical plug-in air diffuser, okay? So if you have like an air wick or glade plug-in, those are not a big deal, okay, to dogs and cats. The bigger danger are these liquid potpourris. They are safe for dogs, not a big deal, but cats have an altered liver metabolism, which means that they can't metabolize regular drugs the way a dog can. Unfortunately, when people heat up liquid potpourri. So these are typically almost like these waxy balls that people will heat up on a simmer pot and put a little tea candle underneath and it melts it and makes your house smell like evergreen and pumpkin spice and, you know, the smells of the holidays. Well, when people do this, unfortunately, your cat's so curious, not only can they take a few licks out of the simmer pot liquid potpourri, but that can result in not only thermal burns, but corrosive burns to the mouth and the esophagus. Unfortunately, because of the cat's liver metabolism, again, they can't metabolize this liquid potpourri. It's actually a cationic detergent. It's going to cause drooling, not eating, lethargy. And in severe cases, albeit rare, it can actually cause abnormal fluid to accumulate within their lung, what we call pulmonary edema in rare, rare, rare liver problems. Again, not a big deal for dogs, but big, big danger for cats. So ideally, no liquid potpourri for cat owners. Like I mentioned before, no tinsel, no uh, weird unbaked bread dough or alcohol. Obviously, that's more of a dog thing. Um, But we want to keep those out of reach just to be on the safe side. Okay, I have one more question. Now, during the holidays, everyone's going to be a little more wound up than normal. And a lot of people use CBD these days for themselves. And they're starting to use it for their cats. I've heard different schools of thought about this. Some, you know, say it's okay. And a lot of what I've heard, especially from veterinarians, is that there's an issue with dosage. What is your thought on this, on CBD for cats? So I should disclose that I am on the advisory board for one veterinary CBD company called LVET. I will also say that my own dog is on CBD. I will say as a toxicologist, most people aren't aware there's a difference between THC and CBD. So marijuana has THC. That's why people smoke it for the hallucinogenic effects. Most of the time with appropriately extracted CBD, there should be no THC in there, okay? So your pet should not get marijuana poisoning. That's the good stuff, right? So it shouldn't be in there. But they're getting different types of cannabinoids. Now you have to do your research because there are some recalls and some warnings from the Food and Drug Administration, what we call the FDA, where they've actually measured the amount of CBD in some of these products And unfortunately, some of them had absolutely no CBD. They did not match the label correctly, or there were large amounts, or there were heavy metals and contaminants like heavy metals or pesticides or fungicides. So you really want to be careful. I'm going to say, when in doubt, check with your veterinarian. But depending on what state you live in, veterinarians sometimes aren't even allowed to talk about CBD with you because it's extra label. So just be aware You have to do your research. I always say you have to be careful when it says veterinary recommended. That means one veterinarian somewhere has recommended it, right? So do your research. I always like to ask for a certificate of analysis. If the company can't provide you one, then you definitely should avoid them. Because if they can't provide a certificate of analysis saying, yes, we've done testing, we've paid for extensive testing to say there's X amount of CBD in this product, there's no heavy metals, there's no contaminants, I become really cautious. So you do want to do your research. I'm not a fan of CBD in cats because most of the time it makes them drool profusely. And there's not enough research in my experience looking at it long-term wise in cats. Again, cats are super, super sensitive to drugs because of their altered liver metabolism, what we call glucuronidation. Now, in dogs, there are several studies that have been conducted when it comes to CBD. There have been some studies that look specifically at its use for osteoarthritis. They've looked at it, or there's some preliminary studies looking at it for separation anxiety. 
There's some studies looking at for a couple of different reasons for pain control, for cancer, and there's still a lot of pending research out there. So I will say, if you do want to consider CBD, you have to check with your veterinarian or the ASPC Animal Poison Control Center first, even if you're considering it in yourself. Why? Because it interacts with a lot of other drugs. CBD undergoes metabolism in the liver through something called the cytochrome P450 system. And I don't want to get into too much detail because it's kind of boring, but that's why I went to vet school. I will say with the way that CBD is metabolized, it interferes with other drugs. So if your dog is on anti-seizure medication or is potentially on other drugs, even as benign as thyroid medication, if they're on certain non steroidal anti-inflammatories, if they're on immunosuppressives, you have to talk to your veterinarian because there could be some drug interaction. I will say that when I started my geriatric pit bull mix on CBD, he actually responded uh, within two weeks. He had more mobility. Uh, he seemed less sore. He seemed to enjoy my toddler more, my human one. <laughs> so when in doubt, you always want to pick a product that has a certificate of analysis that is proven to be pure and safe. You always want to check with your veterinarian. And I'm going to say the data is still out on cats. Uh, right now, I uh, do support its use carefully in dogs, but I'm going to say in cats, I'm going to hold off just because it usually causes drooling and cats metabolize things really differently. So we're still waiting for a lot of research to come out in the area of cats. All right. And say if you want to, you know, calm your cats during this hectic time of year, there's always products like Feel Away. And I think there's another one, Pet Remedy. That, that is a great question, Michelle. So yes, remember cats do not like sudden change. They, and obviously this is going to vary with COVID, like a lot of people aren't even having family come over. But if your cat gets stressed out from family coming over or from a Christmas tree being put up or from people visiting, you do want to consider different types of medications. There are a ton of different over-the-counter holistic medications that you can talk to a vet about. I personally say in severe cases, there are actually some cats that have behavioral problems that need prescription medications. And these are usually what we call SSRI antidepressants. Um, so there's also some really, really safe sedatives like trazodone that are prescription, really safe ones called gabapentin. Obviously, never give a drug, a human drug, to your cat or your dog without checking with your vet or the ASPC Animal Poison Control Center first. But yes, I'm going to say absolutely look into options. I love Feel Away as a, a pheromone um, to be able to help with that. But if your cat or dog has pretty severe um, anxiety, uh, when in doubt, pharmacological intervention is always appropriate. That's great information. I think Charlotte, one of my cats, might, might need something like that. She hisses at everyone. So, <laughs> okay. So to round it up, this has been some such great information, Dr. Justine. So I guess to summarize, it seems like the most important things, stay away from Easter lilies, no tinsel, be aware of your tree, and just be aware of CBD and other you know, things that are out in the open that could maybe entice your cat. Yeah. Great summary, Michelle. Again, when in doubt, talk to your veterinarian, but realize the holidays are not only stressful for us, but they're stressful for our four-legged friends. And we want to minimize any kind of stress to them, whether or not it's behavioral related or whether or not it's medical. We obviously all want to avoid an emergency visit to the ER vet during a stressful holiday that we're supposed to be relaxing and enjoying. I want everyone to be safe right now. So again, great tips. Pet proof. Make sure that Christmas tree is secure. Make sure most people know, you know, not to give certain poisons, but they forget about the weird zingers like tinsel. They forget about homemade holiday ornaments. They forget about things like espresso beans covered in chocolate sitting under the Christmas tree. They forget about things like unbaked bread dough. So when in doubt, pet proof. It is oftentimes safer to crate your dog out of the kitchen so they don't get into things. Your cat oftentimes prefers to be locked in a comfortable room with some white noise and their litter box and some tasty treats instead of mingling with the family. So make sure you pet proof appropriately. When in doubt, I always say the safest thing you can do is always pet proof. The next thing is to pre-program your cell phone and GPS 
for your veterinarian, your emergency veterinarian, and the ASPCA Animal Poison Control Center. And that way, if you're really stressed out and something happens, you always have that information readily available. Dr. Justine, that is such great information. Thank you so much for coming on Catitude and sharing all of this fantastic information for the holidays. And I wish you and your family and your fur ones a very happy holiday. Thank you so much for having me on today, Michelle. So everyone, I hope you really enjoyed listening to this episode. There was a lot of great information from Dr. Justine. Be sure to check out her show. It's ER Vet on Pet Life Radio. And I'd like to thank my cat crew, which is Charlotte and Molly and Dennis and Sammy and Jethro for teaching me all about cats. And thanks to my producer, Mark Winter, for making me and my guest today, Dr. Justine Lee, sound amazing. Now keep listening. We have some great stuff coming up. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.